Yo, what is going on, everybody? It is Grip and Rip Sports Cards back here with another video for you guys today. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a huge change to 2023 Bowman Draft because, oh boy, there is a big change. Hey, a very big change compared to last in a few years ago and, and, you know, years past to say the least. So we'll talk all about it in this video. But before we get into that, thank you so much for joining me on this video. Can we get a hundred likes minimum on today's video? Is that the best way you can help me grow this channel is by hitting that like button. And speaking of growing the channel, we are doing a giveaway. We are giving away hobby packs of series two. Once we hit 7,000, it might already say 7,000 on your screens. But I think I'm like eight away. Um, I think it was like 6,992 or something like that. So this might be the last time I get to announce the giveaway or next to last. We'll definitely have a winner this week. I'll tell you that for, for damn sure. But all you got to do and make sure you have the steps because this is probably the last time I'm going to say it is make sure you're subscribed, like this video, turn on the post notifications for all the content on this channel, which there's plenty of. And last but not least, comment who was your all-star representative on your favorite team in the all-star break. And I'll pick the winner once we hit 7,000. So like I said, probably one of the last times I'm going to talk about it. Probably tomorrow is the last time I'm going to talk about it. So thank you so much, 7,000. I appreciate all y'all for helping me get to 7,000. Hopefully, my goal for 2024 is 10K. That is my goal. Hopefully, we get there. And hopefully, it's going to be awesome because I have so many cool things planned in 2024 and hopefully you guys join along for the ride because it's going to be incredible so don't want to spoil what i got planned because believe me i got something cooking i got something cooking all right don't want to say what it is but guess what when y'all find out you're going to be amazed just as, as i was amazed to actually get this plan going and of course we'll mention it just very briefly i got merch link in the description um, christmas merch is available the sale ends today for cyber monday um, use the code GNR for my initials, Grip and Rip, uh, for 20% off your purchase on the site. So hopefully you guys take a part of that. Um, we had a few people buy shirts, so thank you so much to anybody who bought shirts. I don't know the names. I don't remember them particularly. Um, but thank you so much to everybody who bought the shirts. I appreciate all y'all. And there's still time. There's still time to put the Christmas shirts up. Uh, you know, once they're gone, they're gone. Um, had a lot of people already buy them, but I don't know how many are left. Um, but either way... Uh, once, uh, New Year's, uh, January 1st rolls around, the Christmas merch will be going down for the year and it will be brought back next year. So yeah, so hopefully you guys do enjoy that. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. So let's get into the conversation because this is an interesting one. This is definitely an interesting conversation. And I figured this needs to be talked about before December 13th. So December 13th, of course, you guys are well aware th at this point, because we've talked about it now for a couple of days is the, um, release day of, of draft as well as 2023 tops chrome black which i mean could be a good set i don't know i mean for what you get for that price is it worth it i, I don't know I, I truly don't know it's such a weird and interesting set one pack and then and then you get an encased uh like autograph in a in a one touch so i don't know i would probably buy the singles of my of my team um i don't really have you know a need to go out there and buy a box. I think it was like 140 or 150, I think, something like that. So I, I don't really want to go out there and buy one of those. Uh, I think that would be, you know, very, uh, eh, not the best bang for your buck. And then you got <laughs> plain Jane Heritage High number, which honestly no one gives a damn about, as I expected. And I even said this in the other video a couple days ago. I could usually tell how anticipated a set, a, a set is, is going to be based off of my views on my on my videos with particular products and the views related to, to high number are <laughs> down the dump so if that's any indicator on what that the hype for that product is yeah as we all expected not there at all so i don't know but either way we're gonna talk about draft draft is by far gonna be the best set of 2023 that has yet to come out now once we do our top five best sets of 2023, we'll really put it together at that point. Um, we're not there yet. We have to really dive deep and look at every set and, you know, and say, hmm, this set was good. And, you know, and it sucks because Stadium Club is usually always on that list. But unfortunately, Stadium Club doesn't come out 
New release date, January 17th now. We'll, uh, we'll actually see if it comes out on January 17th or not. We'll, we'll, we'll really put that to the test. Um, once, once that, once that comes out, we'll see if that actually is the real release date. We'll see. Uh, I'm not convinced about it, but we'll see. I uh, still have no word on Series 1 yet, by the way, either. Series 1, I have legitimately no clue what's going to go on with that set. I tried to email Tops. I actually sent Tops an email. Like, do you have any information on Series 1? They have not gotten back to me. So, I don't know. I truly don't know. Uh, I wish I knew, but they don't even know, probably. So, it is what it is. But either way, of course, we're going to be talking about changes. We're going to be talking about some pretty pretty big changes um, with, with drafts. So, the first change, which this is not the point of the video, but I want to highlight this because this is a change. This is an absolutely huge change to how you buy draft. So draft, of course, last year came out in Hobby Light, Jumbo, and Super Jumbo. I'm here to tell you today that Hobby Light is no more. That is not a thing. Um, I talked about that briefly in another video. Uh, I feel like I should have talked about it here because, of course, this video is called Changes. Um, so this is a pretty big change. So anybody out there that's going to go and buy one of these boxes that we are, we are opening, this is last year's product, it's not going to happen because guess what? It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. All they are doing is Super Jumbo and Jumbos this year. Um, pretty pretty crappy if I say so myself. Um, they're de they definitely should give a cheaper option because, like, let's, let's, let's be honest with ourselves here. And I, I've talked about this so much. Who's going to go out there and buy a $500 box or a $700 box when they have the holidays to worry about, gifts to buy, families to feed on Christmas, which is not cheap, believe it or not. If you buy and make all your stuff or have catering, it is not cheap, believe me. You know, ever since my grandma died a couple years ago, this is the second Thanksgiving we've had where she has not been there. So, of course, she was the person who cooked and everything because, you know, my family can't cook. So, we have to get a catered now. To get our stuff catered was like two fifty. you know. And same thing applies for Christmas, you know, catering and, and making stuff and buying all the ingredients and, you know, and feeding your families, buying gifts. Who's going to go out there and buy a five or $700 box if you have to do that stuff in December? Because I know I have to, and a lot of other people have to as well, right? So it kind of sucks. It kind of really sucks that the fact that we're not going to have a Hobby Light version. But at the same time, at the same time, look at it like this. You can use your buybacks, which I'm going to. You could buy individual packs because I can guarantee you every hobby store is going to go that route because they realize, but for whatever reason, Tops doesn't realize, is that people can't buy $500 boxes. So luckily for the people out there who don't have $500 like myself to go and waste on a box, there's packs available. $40 a pack, about roughly $40, that's the math. And if you buy one stack, which will cost you $160, and like I said, or uh, use your buybacks. Use your buybacks. I promise you, this is the set. If you were planning to use your buybacks, if you already haven't used them on Chrome Update, which I don't blame you if you did there, but if you didn't use them already, this is the set to do that for. So I am. That's how I'm going. That's my approach, and I can guarantee you that's going to be a lot of other people's approaches as well. Um, if you buy one stack, there's a jumbo box, right? There's four packs in each slot. There's a middle. A, a right and a left stack. There's three stacks in a jumbo box. If you buy a whole stack, you're guaranteed an autograph. If you buy a top to bottom stack, top to bottom, you are guaranteed to get an autograph because there's one autograph in each stack in the jumbo box. So that's what I'm doing. I'm getting a pack for free, so I only have to pay for three packs. So it's going to be about 120 for me, gladly. I will gladly pay for four packs for 120 That's a good deal if you ask me for draft. An autograph, just look at it as a hobby box. Look at it as if you're buying a hobby box of any other product that has a guaranteed autograph. That's how you have to go about it. That's how you have to go about it. It sucks, but there's another big change. There's another big change, which is going to be the main portion of the video. Um, but it's pretty significant. It's it's Is it as significant as the last change I just talked about with no hobby light? Yeah, it kind of is. Because it has something to do with the checklist itself. And the checklist is out. It's only 200 cards. The card checklist is not long. I looked at the checklist and shout out to my buddy Knoxville Rips. He actually sent me a list of this myself. So that way I actually know what I'm talking about. Would you believe about one third or more, just about a little over one third probably, of the first round picks are not in draft this year? Would you believe that? Highlighted, of course, which we already knew this is going to be the case anyways, Dylan Cruz. Dylan Cruz, in case you guys are wondering, all you Nationals fans, is not in Bowman Draft. Why? Because he was the second round pick. 
and or the second overall pick, I should say. And they always keep the second overall pick for the following year's product. Don't know why. It's a, it's a selling point, really, but it is what it is, right? But that's not the point I'm trying to make here. The point I'm trying to make here is that just over 10, just probably a little over 10, I didn't count how many there were exactly, but there was at least 10 plus first round picks. And they're all in like the 20s as well. They're not in Bowman Draft. That's pretty significant. Because in years past, you would probably get about a handful, about maybe five to seven, maybe seven in years past of first round picks that weren't in draft that year and they were held off for Bowman the next year. That is pretty significant. Why is that significant? Because they are basically nerfing Bowman draft. Now, of course, if you guys don't know what nerfing means, it's a video game reference. It means to make worse, to make it worse, right? They made Bowman draft worse. And of course, um, the, who was it? I believe the pick for the Twins, I forget his name. Why am I drawing a blank? But either way, he is the second most significant person not in Bowman this year as well. So there's some pretty big news. This is some pretty, pretty big news. Um, does it change my opinion on draft? Kinda. Why I say kinda? Because that, by doing what they did, not only makes the, the checklist worse, it also, which this is a big hitter for a lot of people, makes the autograph checklist worse. Because obviously, they're not going to have an autograph if they're not in the product. So that is a pretty big deal. That is definitely a pretty, pretty big deal to have about one-third of the first round of picks not in the product. Especially when the product is called draft. So, yeah. In my eyes, that is not a good look. And I'm glad that that news actually hit now instead of like days before the release. Um, because, like, let's say if you're a fan of, I don't remember the exact names. I wish I did. There's a lot of them, though. There's like at least about 10 to 12. Um, like, let's say if you're a fan, I'm just going to throw a name out. Uh, pff, athletics, which I do think. Uh, Jack Wilson's son is in the, in the product. But either way, I'll, I'll use this for an example because I know this is the type of player they're doing this for. Let's say you're an athletics guy and you're so hyped to get your first overall pick in draft. And all of a sudden, you find out, huh, wait, hold on. Your guy is actually not in draft. But luckily, all of the bad teams, like most of them, except um, Dylan Cruz and the guy for the... Uh, who is it? The guy for the Twins? I don't know. Why am I forgetting his name? I don't exactly remember. I, I'm drawing a blank. But either way, um, like a lot of the teams that they're holding them off for are like the like the lower end of the draft. Like, you know, for example, like maybe the Astros and, and the Yankees and the teams that actually did well and had a lower pick in the draft. But still, it doesn't make it right. I'm not trying to justify it by any means. Believe me, because it's pretty bad. I mean, when you have a product called Draft, and one-third, about probably just a little over one-third of the first round is not in draft, which the, that's the set they should be in. Now, I understand, I completely understand having to have a selling point for next year. I completely get it. Believe me, I understand it. I do. But when you're hiding one-third of the, of the first round, in next year's draft, or I should say next year's Bowman that comes out in May, by the way. I find that funny, by the way. I don't know if you guys know this. They revealed Bowman already next year. Bowman has a release date. I believe it is May 24th next year. I could be wrong, but that is a Friday because I remember the Saturday that May 25th is a Pirates versus Braves game. It's Bobblehead Day, Saturday night. I'm going to it. Um, just a little little announcement there in case you guys want to, you know, visit old Grip and Rip at PNC Park. But either way... um. The point I'm trying to make here is they already revealed next year's Bowman product. And I kind of find it funny how we still don't have a Series 1 reveal. I kind of find that funny because I'm telling you right now, this is not even related to this video topic, but I'm going to say it right now anyways. Series 1 next year, I'm telling you right now, I promise you, come back to this video when it's announced. It is not coming out the week of spring training. Spring training, Valentine's Day, and Series 1 release are all synonymous with each other because they all happen the same week. I can guarantee you 
that is not going to be the case this year because we have not gotten a single tidbit of information for Series 1. So come back to this video once they announce Series 1 comes out in March because that's when I believe it's coming out. That's my prediction. And then April, we get Big League. And then May, we get Bowman. And then June, probably Series 2 because it seems like they only do one set a month now until December when they release three in one freaking day which is ridiculous if you ask me. July, Chrome, August, nothing. September, Allen and Ginter, October, update. I can go on and on. I know the whole schedule. I know the whole schedule like the back of my hand. But that's not the point. To wrap this video up, because we're going to get into the packs here in, uh, in just one second. You know, does this hinder or change my viewpoint of draft? Like I said, kind of. It sucks if your team, your guy, is not in the checklist. Because believe me, there is a good chance, there is a very, very good chance that your guy is not in the product. If you are a fan of a good team who had a lower pick in the draft in the first round, there is a very good chance. Like I said, a lot of the guys that are that are in that are missing from the product are like in the late teens into, into the 20s. So, if you are a fan of a decent team, I would check the checklist because there's a good chance that your guy is not in the product, which sucks. It really does suck. But, you know, I get that they have to have a selling point for Bowman. Um, maybe they thought Bowman needs a boost. I mean, Bowman's typically pretty good. I don't know why they're saving all these guys for Bowman. Bowman is typically a pretty, pretty good set in, in May. Um, draft, of course, is probably the best set that they typically release out of the three, out of Chrome and uh, regular Bowman and then Draft out of the three. Um, draft always will take the cake, I think, as the best um, because, you know, we'll have to wait and see over time. But I think this year's Draft class was very good. Um, but it looks like they're trying to make Bowman better. I don't know exactly why they're trying to make Bowman better. Dylan Cruz is going to sell that product like no tomorrow regardless of, of who is in the checklist or not. Dylan Cruz and the guy for the Twins. I don't know why I'm forgetting his name. Um, but yeah, him as well. Those two guys are literally going to sell the product regardless of who's in the checklist anyways. Um, and of course, and the icing on the cake, which I haven't even mentioned, are the Series 1 rookies and most likely Series 2 rookies. So anybody in Series 1 and Series 2 next year is also going to be a Bowman. So your... Henry Davis, your Ellie De La Cruz, your your Andy Rodriguez for the Pirates, your Encarnacion Strand, your Noel V. Martes, the NL Central Pete Crow Armstrong. I can go on and on. Jason Dominguez. So not only are you going to get a studded class in, in Bowman next year because they held off all these guys for whatever reason, all those rookies from Series 1 and Series 2 are going to be in Bowman like, like it was this year. So Bowman's going to, look, Bowman's going to be pretty good. Yeah, Bowman's definitely be pretty good. Maybe that's why they they announced Bowman already for next year. Because it looks like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You know, prospects are very hard to predict. I don't like to put predictions on people. But I'll tell you this for a matter of damn fact. Dylan Cruz and Paul Skeens are going to by far be the most valuable out of any player from this draft. Not even close. The LSU program they got over there in college is by far the best college developmental system for baseball and future MLB players. And you're seeing it right now. And I'm telling you right now, Dylan Cruz and Paul Skeens will both be in the major leagues next year. So chances are, Paul Skeens will have two Bowman cards, because he'll have one next year in Bowman uh, regular. Um, and Max Clark, or not Max Clark, but Dylan Cruz is probably only going to have two Bowman cards as well because of Chrome and regular Bowman. So, you know, it is what it is. But either way, I'm going to get out of here. But before we do, we're going to open a couple packs. We're going to open a couple packs. I'm going to get this box of Bowman Draft out of here. Um, three packs left of this. We still have two, um, what's it called? Two uh, Ray Waves to pull. And then we're going to open a Chrome Update pack because I like Chrome Update. Chrome Update is definitely, it's treated me well so far. But, you know, luck runs out all the time eventually. So... We'll have to truly wait and see how the box of my hobby box goes. Uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to the draft. I am definitely, definitely looking forward to the draft. Um, just because, you know, obviously my guy, Paul Skeens, 
is in the product. Um, if he wasn't in the product, I probably wouldn't have such a biasy probably towards it. Ultimately, at the end of the day, Ray Wave there. So let's see what that's all about at the end here. We have a oh, we have a parallel. Wow, look at that. I think, I think I could be completely wrong. That could be a parallel. It could not be a parallel. I'm not entirely sure. But let's see here. Let's get through these uh, base cards first. You know, I'll tell you, my box has not been good. I'll tell you this right now. Uh, my box, in terms of good firsts from last year, um, ha has not been good. We have not pulled any of the big guys yet. Um, we have two packs left. There's Matt McLean. Um, we have two packs left after this. I, I don't expect anything. I don't. Um, Justin Campbell. Um, we got Thomas Harrington. That's pretty cool. Uh, we have a, yeah, this is a, uh, okay, we have a blue. Jordan Walker, look at that. Jordan Walker blue. Pretty cool. I'll take that. Um, not a first, but, you know, when you have a good rookie, pre-rookie, I guess, this is his last Bowman card, I do believe. Maybe I'm wrong. What's it out of? It is out of, huh? Okay, well, guess what? <laughs> it's it's not numbered. It's not numbered. Look at that. So, all right, I'm going to need someone to help me. Uh, what is this? It's not numbered, literally. Um, like, look, it, it's not numbered. So, huh, interesting. But a parallel nonetheless, I guess, right? Uh, we have a refractor. Now we go to the uh, base and hopefully show you that. I didn't see a first, so that's never a good sign. Uh, I could be wrong, though. I saw a little glimpse. Gavin Cross, that's a decent one. Um, George Valera should make the major leagues next year. And we have a Drew Baker. Again, the Ray Waves in my box have been utter garbage. Utter, utter garbage. Not a single first. Literally. Out of the four, out of five we have pulled so far, not a single first in there. So let's get this open. Hopefully this actually, you know, we get something good out of here. You know, this product, like I said, has treated me pretty well so far. Um, but you never know. I mean, luck runs out. We have a refractor. Could this be an autograph? This could be your autograph, folks. It could be. I don't know. I know why I know that. Because that border for a base card typically doesn't happen. So that could be an autograph. I don't know. I'm taking a guess. I, I don't know. Ref Snyder. We'll go from the back just in case. So let's see here. We'll, we'll do a slow reveal. Um, this could be an autograph. It could not be an autograph. I hope it's not. Oh, I hit O'Neal. Um, I hope it's not because it's just a base if it is, which will be pretty crappy. Um, but, ah, oh, okay, never mind. It is a Will Smith refractor all-star game i completely forgot those are considered inserts now yeah by the way in case you guys didn't know all-star game cards since last year they made this change last year are considered inserts now for whatever reason i don't know why it's a pretty bad change if you ask me um because home run derby and all-star game are kind of the reason why this set exists in the court the trade deadline and to make those cards inserts is pretty crappy if i say so myself um, either way, I'm getting out of here. Let me know what you think about the big changes regarding a 2023 Bowman draft. Are you surprised? Are you upset? Happy? I'd love to know what you guys have to think. And I'll see you guys in the next video.